There will be an explosion of the prophetic training, of prophetic mentoring, prophetic schools all across the state, says the Lord, because it is a state of innovation in the spirit. And I am raising up the wells of healing signif a significant, uh, significantly. It is not a mistake that I have sent my servant Oral Roberts to Orange County and that he resided there until his death. That mantle was placed upon that territory, but there have been very few who have picked it up. And I would say unto you that it is time to pick up that mantle, says the Lord. It is time for the church of California to become mantled with the healing anointing, for many become mantled with an entertainment anointing. And they are building on entertainment. They are moving on soulish prophetic words, and they are moving on soulish worship. But I am raising up a sound out of this land. I am raising up a sound of heaven and a sound of glory. I have mantled the worship out of this territory with glory, yes. says the Lord. Yes. Glory it shall be known by. Glory it shall be known by. Glory it shall be known by. California, you are marked for glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Wow. That's powerful, man. And I received that word. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, see, this is deep tonight, because a lot of churches don't even understand the prophetic, they don't teach on the prophetic, they don't even believe in prophecy, they don't believe any of this kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that changes nations. The, the declaration of the word of the Lord will change regions, change people's lives, it'll change nations, it'll change states, it'll change cities. Amen. If the body of Christ will say what God's telling them to say. I'm going to tell you, the reason why this church has lasted so long is because dad and mom have obeyed the prophetic voice of the Lord. That's why. Pastors, usually by this time, they usually give up and they're gone. We've been here 33 years, and, 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 and a lot of pastors are burned out by the time 20 years come around in ministry. See, this is something deep. This is, this is, this is, it's, it, it's deep. I want to say it's deep because... A lot, of, a, a lot of Christians don't even understand prof prophecy. It doesn't mean they're wrong. It's just they don't understand it. So when I say deep, I know it's not deep for some of us because we, we've been taught this and we have an understanding of this, but some of us might not. But listen, we are speaking spirits, the Bible says. If we're followers of, of Christ, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. He is constantly uh, nudging us. He's constantly giving us words. He's constantly wanting us to speak things in our prayer time. He's wanting us to speak things as we're driving down the street in our car. He's wanting us to declare things over our families, neighborhoods, cities, whatever. God. We're constantly doing that. He's constantly nudging us and prompting us and wanting us to say. The Bible says in Isaiah 21, verse 6, it says that you are, that's the verse that God gave me right before the beginning of this year. He gave it to me last, uh, last October 2015. He said, tell the church it's time to stand on your wall and declare what the Lord is showing you. Yes. That's prophecy. That's, right. that's, that's prophecy. Right. That is what, see, I know why the Lord wants me to teach us on Sunday night, here tonight, because there's a lot of people here, almost, well, I'll tell you right now, everybody here is prophetic. Yes. If you're a believer in Christ, and you're following Jesus Christ, and He's your Savior, you're a prophetic person. Yeah. The Holy Spirit lives in you, you can prophesy. Amen. Yeah. He might have you prophesy the way we prophesied just a minute ago. He might have you prophesy while you're laying in bed at night, getting ready to go to sleep, and He shows you something, He wants you to speak something out into existence. Death and life are the power of the tongue. You have what you declare, good or bad. You have it. Amen. That's what the Bible says. When the devil comes and tries to give you a thought, it says, take no thought, saying. Once you take that thought and once you say it, you give access to the enemy and it starts to grow roots in your life. It's true. We are all prophetic. We have... Prophetic. Some of us move. There's nine gifts of the Spirit. We can read those. But but some of us move in the word of knowledge. Some of us move in the word of healing. Some of uh, the, uh, the gifts of healings. Some of us move in the gifts of prophecy. There's all, there's nine gifts there. But let me tell you something. Prophecy. We there's a difference between being prophetic and being a prophet. 
There's certain people, the five-fold ministry gives, one of them is a prophet. There's certain people that are called to be prophets. And if you're a real prophet, you don't got to go around telling everybody you're a real prophet. It'll be obvious. Just because you have a, your name with a card and it says prophet on it doesn't mean you're a prophet. I've seen a lot of those, and they're not even around anymore. Growing up in ministry, I've seen a lot of weird stuff. But seriously, if you're a prophet, you're gonna, people are going to know that you really are truly a prophet. And I'm going to tell you, you know, you might not be called a prophet. I'm not called a prophet. I'm not, that's not my gift is, is to be a prophet. But I can prophesy. Just like everyone in this building is, is a follower of Jesus Christ. You can prophesy. We are a speaking spirit. He is in us. There's some of you in here that have said things to me in the past that you didn't even know you were prophetically speaking into my life. You had said something to me and, and God reminded me of a week or two or three or maybe five or six years before God had spoke that to me and God used you to re-speak that to me again. Amen. Some might say, hey, this happened to me, but then most of the time I just keep my mouth shut and I thank the Lord for it. Yeah. But you're prophesying. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Turn with me real quickly over here. I, don't want to, I just want to read a few scriptures so that way at least, uh, you know, everyone knows in here that I'm at least a word man too. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Super familiar. <clears throat> here, you want your Bible? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Look at verse 1. It says... <clears throat> Pursue love. See, when you prophesy, you better be walking in love. <laughs> if, you want, if you want that to last, walk in love. If you want your ministry to last, walk in love. If you want to be used by God to the full capacity that you can be used by God for, to bless others, serve others, and help others, you've got to walk in love first, or none of it will work. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Okay, I'm not teaching about love tonight, but that's huge. It's the first thing you've got to be. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Yeah. But especially that you may prophesy. All prophecy is is the creative voice of God on the inside of you. Yeah. The creative voice of God living on the inside of you. That's what prophecy is. Hallelujah. See, now tonight, that word that the Lord spoke over Julie tonight concerning her life, her ministry... The, 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 the believers there, the people there in India that are over there right now, that word right there, if she'll grab it, which I know she will because she understands it, if she'll grab onto that and believe what the prophet has said about that, she, she will and, her, and the ministry and the people there will reap that reward of that prophetic word. Yeah. That, time and, and that time and season and space and time right now that that was spoke to her has been released. Yeah. Amen. And the word of the Lord never returns void. Lord, yeah. Kim Clement, he just passed away a couple weeks ago. True prophet to the nations, man. Very prophetic man, used by God tremendously in this nation and the, the world. Those words that he spoke while he was here, they're still in operation. Yeah. They're still here. They don't just die when somebody dies. They're here because they're delivered by the Holy Spirit. And they're still effective and they're still working. I'm watching words that have been spoken to me since I was a little kid starting to manifest in my life. Right now, I'm 42 years old. I'm starting to see some things happen in my life that was spoken to me as a young child. I've hung on to those. I was able to write some of them down. Mom was able to write some of them down for me as I was a kid and, and all this kind of stuff. I'm starting to see some of those things starting to come to pass. What has God said to you about your life? What has God said to you? Grab a hold of that stuff. And if you feel like God hasn't said anything, ask Him. What is He saying? Amen. He wants to tell you. He wants to talk to you. Yeah. Desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. He speaks his future. He speaks the plan of God out when he prays in the Holy Ghost. Verse 3, but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Hallelujah. Yeah. I've even had... Men or women of God prophesied to me, and it wasn't 
flowers and beds and, and roses. Right. It was straighten up. Get a flu. You better wake up. Larry Huggins said, get over yourself in the past. There's been things that God has said, but it's love by the Father. It's warning. It's, it's him wanting to get your attention to say, hello, Michael, wake up, man. The plan's so huge for you. Wake up. Don't let it pass you by. You know? Not everything is, ooh, you know, angels playing harps and floating around on the clouds. Sometimes it's like, hits you right between the eyes, you know? <laughs> Just like Robert always says, God slapped the stupid out of me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. It's happened to me more than once. I can tell you that much. Yeah. But, again. <laughs> you better not say it too loud, man. <laughs> But desire to prophesy. Yes. Let the Lord use your mouth. It's so powerful, man. So powerful. I'm just, I, I honestly, I wake up every day and I just, I, you know, I'm just like, all right, Lord, you know, anything can happen today, man. Anything can happen today. Amen. I mean, I could be out doing this out somewhere, you know, in the store or whatever, and anything can happen today, Lord. I'm just available. I'm plugged in. Yeah. I'm available. If you want me to talk to somebody, prophesy, lay hands, whatever, Lord. You know, I'm available. That's desiring the things of God right there. And I know we got people in here that want to do that. We got people in here that you just look for opportunities on a daily basis to love on somebody, to serve somebody, to help somebody. I know that, you know, and I know that you would take the time to do that if that came about in your life on a daily basis. But that's the kind of people we have in here tonight. I know that. But God says here, he says, just desire that. And you don't have to turn there, but Isaiah 51, verse 16, Isaiah 51, verse 16, it says that God put uh, his words in Isaiah's mouth to establish him. God put his words in Isaiah's mouth so Isaiah can go out and speak the word of the Lord where it needs to be uh, spoken If he did it for Isaiah, he's doing it for you. Yeah. Come on. Amen. And the awesome thing is, this was even before Jesus came to earth and he was doing it already. Amen. You read about those prophets, man. You know, some of these guys say, yeah, well, there's minor prophets too. I don't call anybody a minor prophet. <laughs> I mean, you, you think about that ministry back then and some of those, some of those guys, Jonah, you know, some of those guys, Jeremiah. You know, God tells them right off the bat, hey, guys. I'm sending you some crazy, wild, weird places. Right. It'd be like God right now sending you over right in the middle of all this nonsense with all the ISIS and all this terrorism stuff. Saying, I want you to go there and I want you to prophesy that their God's coming down and I'm reigning. <laughs> That's what it was like. It's probably pretty equal to that. That's why God told Jeremiah, listen, don't look to yourself that you're too young or you're not old enough to right. prophesy. Right. Don't forget about that. Let me put my words in your mouth. Let it burn. Let the fire of God yeah. burn in your bones. Praise God. It talks about there. And then he says, don't be afraid of their faces. Yeah. Jeremiah, don't worry about it. My hand is on you. I'm going with you. You walk with me. You obey me. You follow me. And I will use you to declare out of your mouth into this generation. Yes. Amen. 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 Use your mouth. Use your mouth to declare it to the generations. Right. Yeah. right. Stop making fun of them and bagging on them and complaining about them and wondering why I've had to deal with this myself. God says, would you just shut your flipping mouth <laughs> and start speaking over them what they need to do? Yeah. Amen. Who I call them to be. Amen. Not your complaining. Amen. Complaining is not doing anything for them. Yeah. But start speaking over them. Amen. Man, that's, prof that's prophecy. Amen. You speak over your kids, you speak over your grandkids, you speak over your cousins, whatever. You speak over your family. You start speaking the life of God into them. You start speaking that they run from the darkness and run to the light. You start speaking that they run from sin and run to the light. I've declared that over my children since they were 
born. That's the word that the Lord gave me to speak over. As soon as Caleb was born, the Lord started telling me what to say over my children. And every time I think about it, I said, Lord, I thank you that my kids run from sin and run to the light. That's what I've always said since they were born. You declare, you declare by the word of the Lord what it's going to be like. That's what God did tonight to that ministry in India. He used us to speak what that was going to be like there. And they'll grab that, which I know they will. She's going to take that back and deliver that. Probably at least some way maybe we can even be able to take the video or the audio or something or their CD or something. I don't know. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube. Yeah, I don't know if they get YouTube in India. Do you guys get YouTube in India? Yeah, okay, well, yeah, it's, it's on the recorder for sure. It, it, but they'll take that back there. They'll take that back there, and they'll be able to play that for those people. And I guarantee you it's going to rock them to the core. That's right, man. That's It rocks me to the core. Praise God. I can't wait to hear about the miracles of certain things. Yeah. Yeah. Arms growing out, eyeballs being yeah. created. Yeah. Yeah. Kinds of wild stuff. See, that reminds me of a story that took place this morning here in our service. You know, I was talking with someone on the phone today, someone that goes to this church that was here this morning. And they were saying, how many of y'all that were here this morning, remember I got up and we were just kind of worshiping the Lord. And all of a sudden, I just started speaking prophetically. I started commanding yeah. organs in people's bodies to be healed. Yeah. Started talking about body parts yeah. and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it just came out of me. I was just standing there going, okay, Lord, awesome, you know. And um, this person calls me this afternoon. They're like, hey, you know. <laughs> Uh, before you even said what you said about that body parts and organs, during worship, this person told me that they were in the spirit, and it was like they were in heaven in the room where all the body parts are. Wow. That God gives to people. To heal people. You can believe it or not, I don't know, whatever, I don't really care. But when you need a body part, you'll believe it, I guarantee you. Right now. Amen. <laughs> He's got spare parts, I'm sure. Amen. He created them, right? Amen. Yeah. But this person told me that before you said that out of your mouth, in worship, they were kind of caught up in the spirit, and they saw themselves up in this room where all these body parts were, and they're like, what? Why, Why is all this? And then all of a sudden, God says that to people in this place. And as I'm saying that, I'm thinking to myself, okay, God, this is really cool. I'm glad you're using me to say this, but I want to hear about this really happening to people. Right. <laughs> so I'm waiting. I'm waiting for something to take place. I'm waiting for someone to say, hey, I didn't have a kidney, now I do, or something like that. That's happened in this place before, too. Yeah. Huh? Okay, we'll get to it in a minute. Okay, all right, no, no worries. But I'm waiting for that kind of stuff to take place. And you know what's awesome is, like, we're, I was talking to this person today, and, and it's like sometimes we don't even know we need something healed inside of our bodies, and God does it right. before we even know. That's right. That's that part. Amen. 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 But see, that's the prophetic. Yeah. You just speak what God's telling you to say. Yeah. I didn't get here this morning planning on saying those two words about organs and body parts. I, that was the farthest from my mind when I got here. But all of a sudden the Lord says that. And then it's awesome to hear that someone call me and tell me that because that encourages me that that was the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. And that just, makes me want, wants to, that just makes me want to press in harder and harder yeah. with the prophetic. Yeah. Now, see, the prophetic is a good thing. It's very valuable. It's very powerful. It's very needed. It's, it's, God, God will say things at certain times and seasons in our lives. We can't just go out and do whatever we want to do and start prophesying. The Bible says there in 1 Corinthians, it says, as the Spirit wills, Amen. Yep. He'll use you in those gifts. He'll speak prophetically as the Spirit wills. So you just listen to the Holy Spirit. And I guarantee you, there's been times in my life where I didn't even know I was prophesying to somebody, and I was. Yeah. And then come to find out, two, three weeks down the road, or even farther down the road, that person will come up to me and say, Hey, do you remember when you said this? And most of the time, no, I don't remember saying that. Right. They say, well, we do or I do. And when you said that, this is what happened. I'm like, wow, praise God. We had a guy here, I don't know, it's been five, six Five, six months ago, he was sitting here. I haven't seen him in a long, long time. It's because he got a job or whatever from what I heard a couple weeks ago. But there was a man sitting over there, and as I was preaching, I heard the Lord speak to me and say, prophesy to that man that he's going to get a job. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know the man's I don't even know the man's name. I don't even know him, to be honest with you. 
And uh, so I just kind of stopped and I said, hey man, can I pray for you for just a second? And he said, no. Huh. <laughs> I said, all right, well, I'm not going to make you, but by the way, God told me that you're going to get a job. Huh. And I just walked off. And come to find out, the reason why we haven't been seeing the guy is because he got a job about, I don't know, what did he say? A month or two down the road or something yeah. like that? Right. He ended up getting a job. So see, prophetically, the guy didn't even want me to pray for him. That's what's wild about that. Hey, can I pray for you? No. I'm like, all right. Well, God said you're going to get a job anyways. Amen. But see, the mercy, the grace of God, the love of the Father for his child. Amen. So prof the prophetic is so huge. Um, the prophetic, what, what prophetic means is to speak or act out by divine inspiration. Amen. To speak or to act out by divine inspiration. God made man, God made you a speaking spirit. Yes. Look on the inside of you every day and you say, God, if there's anything you want me to declare, yes, yes, Lord, yes, I will yes, declare yes, it. Yes. I'll speak it. You could be at work, you could be driving down the street, and all of a sudden it's just like, you just have this thought come up in you like, man, I just want to see that group of people healed, or I want to see, I want to see life come over into that situation. And you start, just start to speak that. That's prophecy. Yes. You're prophesying that out. Yes, yes. Over that person, over, what you're doing is you're blessing them. Yes, yes, yes. And God will send angels to go and to do the work, and to bless, and to help. Yes. And he heal, praise God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Turn over to Jeremiah. Let's, let's read that real quick. I'm not going to keep you too much longer here. I'm just trying to get this out uh, quickly. Jeremiah chapter 1. I kind of referred to this earlier a little bit, but <clears throat> I want to read just some certain scriptures here. I want to read out of here. Jeremiah 1. Look at, um, let's look at verse 4. Actually, let's just start at, yeah, yeah, let's start at verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. I can still hear the leaves falling from the tree, so I'll wait as people turn their pages. Some of you will get that later on about 2 in the morning, amen? Just don't call me and tell me you got it, amen? <laughs> Thanks for the courtesy laugh, man, I appreciate that, amen? <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. That word sanctified means I've, I've, I've set you apart, praise God. <laughs> I ordained you. That word ordained means appointed. I appointed, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Yeah. Now see, God's obviously calling Jeremiah to be a prophet. Right. Okay, so we have an understanding that there's a difference between prophesying and being a, an ordained, called by God prophet. Amen, right. there's a difference there. Then said I, Jeremiah said, then said I, verse 6, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever. Now, wait, I want you to see this for a second. Let me stop there for a second, because this pertains to our lives personally. He says, Do not say I am a youth. And then he says, God says, For you shall go to all whom I send you. Not to everyone. Right. Get that in your mind for just a second. Think about that. Not to everybody is God going to send you to prophesy to, to proclaim to, to speak to. There's a certain person, a certain people. There's certain people in time, in your future, down the road, that God's going to cause a divine appointment for you to meet. And He's going to use you to that person to speak to. Not everyone, but to certain people. Keep that in perspective just for a second there, because we think, gosh, man, there's so many, you know, how am I going to cover all this? It's not everybody, it's just the certain people God's ordained you to speak to. Right. See, God's ordained me to pastor a certain person, a certain people. He's ordained me to speak to a certain congregation, a certain flock of people in my lifetime. And he'll bring that to pass. I just got to obey him and keep speaking the word, keep doing what he's telling me to do, keep obeying him and, and doing what he says. Amen. That's the same thing with us outside the walls of the church while we're walking down the street, while we're at our work, school, whatever. He's called a certain people into your life that he's going to use you to influence, to prophesy to, to speak to. 
Did you know that even inviting somebody to church can be prophetic to that person? Mm -hmm. I've heard a story after story after story about even stories about people saying they're going to kill themselves unless someone invited them to come to a church. And God supernaturally brought a person into their life within days and invited them to church. Amen. I just had a, my son just, my oldest son just told me a story about a kid he has in class that came up to him on Friday and said, uh, 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 so um, that Christian music that you were listening to in the car the other day when you know, I was with you driving to lunch. And it wasn't your typical Caleb Christian music. Right. It was you can barely understand what they're saying. It's just... You know. It was a band called Fit for a King. Look it up on YouTube. They'll blow your mind. It's awesome. But anyways, he said, he said, what did that guy yell at the... He asked Caleb, what did that guy yell at the beginning of that song? Oh, you're talking, he goes, yeah, what are you yelling? He said, all-consuming fire burn. That's what this guy screams at the beginning of his song. But he sounds, it sounds way rad, like when this guy yells it. I ain't gonna try to do it, but man, it's like, wow. It just fires you up. All-consuming fire burn. And kid goes, oh, he said, all-consuming fire burn. He goes, well, what? Like, you want someone to burn? Like, he didn't understand. Caleb said, so I took a few minutes and explained to him about the fire of God and what God will do, how he'll burn things out of our lives and just how he'll consume us because his love and this and that. And <clears throat> Caleb and Caleb eventually invites this kid, he's one of his buddies, he invites him, hey, why don't you come to youth sometime on, on a Sunday night? We have a youth at church and this and that. And he said, I was wondering when you were going to ever invite me. That's what the kid said to him. But see... <clears throat> That can be prophetic to somebody, man, because they've been waiting for someone just to invite them. Yeah. Maybe they were embarrassed. Hey, can I come to church with you? Or they just weren't sure. They don't understand church. They have no idea what's going to happen there. They don't know what's going on. So they're afraid. But just that invitation sparks something. That fire. <laughs> that consuming fire, amen. So... It says, who I send you, God says. Then he says, and whatever I command you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Oh, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Hallelujah, Lord. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Sounds familiar to Isaiah, doesn't it? See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. God is using Jeremiah. Listen, the words, I wrote this down in my Bible when I was studying this. The words from God, from your mouth, root out, pull down. The words that you speak in prophecy, the words that you speak in your prayer time, your individual, personal, one-on-one, -on -one, you and God, mono we mono, your personal prayer time uses your God uses your mouth to pull down and to destroy the kingdom of darkness. Amen. You can be sitting there going, Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. My neighbors. Lord, I bless so and so at work. Lord, I speak love and life over to them. That right there is destroying and pulling down darkness in that person's life. See, a lot of Christians don't think of it that way. They think they ought to do spiritual warfare. Folks, telling someone, I love you, and speaking blessing over you is doing spiritual warfare, in my opinion. The love of God. Is battling over them, is fighting over them, is, is over them, is, is consuming them. It's, it's huh? Dispelling darkness. Dispelling darkness. It's rooting things out. You invite the love of the Lord into somebody's life, oh, the devils are going to get all freaked out. Man. That's why when you decide to serve God, the devil gets irritated and he tries coming after you. Yeah. But see, you can't touch us as long as we give them no access. And one of the ways we get, the number one way we give the devil access is our mouth. That's my opinion. I don't know if that's my off saying that. I agree. No, I agree with you. Okay. The devil has the right to persecute you from the outside. But John said he that keeps himself yep. when touches it not. That's right. Keeps our mouth 
lined up with his word. I know not every time we do that. I know that sometimes we don't prophesy. <laughs> we say things that are totally way backwards from the word of the Lord. But the best thing you can do is, Father, forgive me. You should have said that. Forgive me for cursing that or speaking against that or whatever, Lord, using my mouth to be stupid with it. Forgive me, Lord. And he does. He blesses you, washes you, loves you, still loves you, and he'll use you for his glory. But our prayer, our prophecy, our speaking the word of the Lord pulls down demonic strongholds. You know, there's been some wild stuff talked about and taught on, on spiritual warfare. A lot of it, some of it's just really wild and just kind of like, I don't even want to participate in that kind of stuff because it seems too hard. Doesn't make sense to me. There was actually people getting in airplanes, flying over cities, trying to fight with demons in the power of the air and all this. <laughs> it's nonsense. <clears throat> you know what spiritual warfare is? It's you saying what God tells you to say. Exactly. We're seated in heavenly places. That's all it is. There was some warfare done here tonight as we prophesied over Julie and that ministry and those people over there in India. It was us saying, devil, you will not have control over that area. You lose your grip in Jesus' name, and the word of the Lord will prevail in that area. That's what was being done. A spiritual warfare, praise God. Amen. There wasn't no one getting beat up. There wasn't no one sweating. There wasn't no one bleeding, you know, screaming, crying, yelling. It was just the prophetic word of the Lord. Boom, God said what he needed to say. Now let's move on. Amen. So... <clears throat> So you got to realize that in Jeremiah's day, the devil had control of the government. Sounds kind of familiar. <laughs> but see, listen. I can't speak for everybody in this nation or every Christian in this nation, but I know a lot of Christians that have said, you know what, we're tired of this. It's time to rise up and stand for who we are, who we believe in, and what God has called us to do. Walk in love, but stand. And hear what God is saying to the church. See, he visits the church first. Right, right. That's what he's been doing to us. Yes. For the past several years now, he's been visiting us. Yes. He's been wanting to clean us. He's been ripping things out of us. We've gone through some valleys maybe for a while, and then we've gone on the mountain, and then we maybe went back down to the valley for a little while, and then we got on the mountain. But we've been going through this journey where God is talking to his people. He's talking to his bride. He's cleansing us. He's cleaning us. He's raising us up to be the prophets and the prophetic voice in the earth by the Holy Spirit that he's called us to be, praise God. Yeah. That's why we've seen a lot of weird wackiness and wildness in the church. And even some of you personally, even me personally, going through what I've gone through in my life and going what you've gone through, the devil doesn't like it. But folks, we don't quit. You haven't quit. You're still here. You're still going forward with a purpose of the Holy Spirit residing on the inside of you to bring you into the destination, the plan, and the purpose that God has for your life. Amen. Amen. That's where we're going. Hallelujah. Amen. You just get yourself, put yourself in the trunk of the car, give Jesus the keys, and say, let's go, Lord. Wherever you take me, whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to say, God, here I am. I'm in your availability. I'm in your I'm for your purpose. I'm for your plan. Nothing in this world. We sung this morning that song. We don't care about worldly desires. We want the presence of God. We want the glory of God in Madera, California. Amen. That's what I say all the time. And I know there's people in here that say the same thing. We want the glory of God to move into this place. This is a kind of glory. Amen. Because that's what's going to change people. Amen. Oh, well, that's, yeah, well, drugs are never going to leave, and prostitution is always going to be here, and all that. Shut up. Yeah. And Christianese, I should uh -huh. ask. <laughs> I just plug my ears when people start talking bad about Madeira. They look at me like, what's your problem? I don't want to hear you talk about that, about the town that's called me to, 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 to love them. I just told some lady the other day, I said, she looked at me kind of strange, but I said, this is my community, and I love the people in this community, and God's going to move in this community. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
That was the end of that conversation. <laughs> but it's the truth to me. That's true. That's true. We're standing for a mighty move of God. Amen. And the awesome thing about it is God will use you to speak it forth. If you see a situation that you think is not right in your job, your neighborhood, your city, whatever, your family, you see a situation, my advice to you is to ask the Lord, God, what do you say about this situation? And wait for him to answer you. He'll answer you. Yeah. Might not be right exactly at that moment, but he's going to answer you. And when he answers you, and says to you what he says to you, then you start saying what he says to you about that situation. And don't let go of it. Be like that bulldog, that pit bull that grabs onto that sucker, that jaw locks, and never lets go. Bonner used to have a dog there growing up. That sucker would lock onto a rope that was hanging from his punching bag. And we would swing that dog, man, and that dog would be this high off the ground, just holding on to that rope, just swinging in circles. He would, no matter how fast we swung that thing, that dog would not come off. He had a hold of it. Yeah. His name was Buck. He was an awesome dog. <laughs> Poor Buck. I know. He was tough, man. Tough. He was happy. Oh, he loved it. But that's what we got to be. When God gives us the word, we got to hold on to that word. We got to speak it. I've had favor prophesied over my life since I was a little, little kid. Favor, 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 favor. I've been speaking favor, favor, favor. And I just got something given to me today that I wasn't even qualified for. And God made a way. Because I've been speaking, Lord, I received a hundredfold, Lord. Amen. I don't fully understand that, Lord God, but I want to receive everything you have for my life. I'm a faithful man to you. I'm faithful to your people, God. I expect a blessing. I expect yeah. favor. I expect favor with you, God, and with man. Yeah. Yeah. Man, there's nothing wrong with that because it's the word. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Expect when you say, expect it to come to pass in your family, your kids, your, your work, whatever. Expect it, guys. Amen. What is the word of the Lord? You grab it and speak it. Yeah. Amen. And continue to speak it. Speak it until you feel released to let that go or until it takes place. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking spirits, guys, we are all called yep. to prophesy. Just believe that you are a prophetic person. Yeah. Stay open to him. When you're on your work shift at work, stay open to the voice of the Lord to speak to you. Yeah. He might have you start to pray for a person in your work. Maybe never even pray for him in person. Maybe never even lay hands on him. But God might have you behind the scenes pray for that person and speak into his life. He yeah. might need healing in his marriage. He might need healing for his children. Yeah. Whatever, the Lord will show you. He'll use you to bless him. And that guy might not ever even know that you were doing that. And that's okay. God gets all the glory. Right. As long as that word comes to pass in that person's life to bless him. Yeah. That's what matters. Amen. Yep. Amen. 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 So I want you to grab a hold of this, te this teaching tonight. This message tonight. Because it's powerful. And it's us.